The Lobster Catcher, written and narrated by Olivia Lowry. My mother's grandfather was a fisherman. He would wade into the rocky waters and collect his pots. He would return with crustaceans as ancient as the seas, kings and queens of the underworld, lured to his humble embrace, to his pots, woven as sure and intricate as the lilting notes of a siren's song, snaring even the hardiest sailors to their doom. And sometimes, in those briefest of moments, fleeting as the hovering place between the high tide and the low, he said that the lobsters sang back. From Atlantis to Leoness, there have always been whispers of lost lands beneath the shore and sands, whole cities submerged like lobster pots, mythical as Arthur and Lancelot, a woven history of threaded fact and fiction, a tapestry of tales, and beneath it all there lay a crustacean corpse, a cragged camelot. Mollusks, winkles, crab and cray, limpets, cuttle, cockles and clams, they all congregated at that salty court, gathered, prayed and sang. From the clapping of the old oysters offering precious pearls of wisdom, to the reedy strain of the playful prawns. This was not a place of quiet reverie. Yet, he would always say there is a sanctity to be found high upon the sea. If you take a breath and dive beneath the wind and the waves and the sea salt spray, there is a peace, a scant and sacred silence. It is as smooth as velvet and as thick, but Deeper and deeper still is where the lobster court chattered and danced and sang, warbling high falsettos, sopranos and tenors of the sea, one long, lilting song, often mistaken for a screaming westerly wind. The crustacean court would gather and dance, swaying, clicking, clashing a frantic rhythm, a dance to the weather gods, a sacred, salty prayer that was sometimes answered. When the wind's in the east, the fish don't feast. Those boats, as bright and brutal as urchin shells, would stay sitting on the land of beasts and men who would shake their heads and know better than to fight the rusting weather vane. Living longer than a century, made up of hard crusts, cruel castanets and furious shells, it may be surprising to know that music was the essence, the beating heart of a lobster's soul. From the steady pulse of the tidal drum to the soft, silky hiss of the sea reeds of the shifting sands, they trilled love songs into the dark depths of echoing caves and beneath the rolling waves. Lonely laments and beautiful ballads of lobsters famed and lobsters forgotten. A crustacean chorus, a congregation that could not help but raise their claws to the dark unknown, screech, stamp, scream and sing along. He also said that sirens are figures of great beauty, skin as smooth and radiant as pearls, hair richer and wilder than the night, cheeks that bloomed like sea pinks, and a scent as sweet as may blossom that would tease and tickle upon a coastal breeze. Sailors, seasick and homesick, would find themselves lovesick, clammy, nauseous, aching, unable to sleep, unable to eat. All they could fill themselves with would be the damning notes of the siren's song. They forgot that sacred peace and silence of the seas. They wanted only to bathe themselves in a salty melody, to drown themselves in it. Like the crustacean court, the music sang to their souls and they had to sing back. My mother's grandfather was a fisherman. It was said that he could sing to lobsters and tickle them to sleep. He was the only siren I ever knew, but he wasn't exactly a looker. I aren't sure if there's a god. He never showed himself to me. But I shall keep an open mind so long as lobsters swim the sea. It might be Neptune or Poseidon I don't care what name he's got 
So long as I can stand beside him When I'm hauling up that pot They say that heaven's in the clouds And hell is down below the sea But till I see a lobster fly It's the other way for me Don't bother me how deep the sea is Or if the water's boiling hot If I can spend the life hereafter With a lobster in a pot